Hey, y'all. Hi. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Welcome to another Field Trip Friday. Where are we? Today we are at the Durham Performing Arts Center, downtown Durham. That is awesome. Have you ever gotten to see a show here? Yeah, I've seen a couple shows here. I'm really excited to be here today. Cool, me too. Let's go check it out. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Welcome to DPAC. My name is Taylor Zansberg. I'm the digital marketing manager. And I'm so excited to have you both here. Yeah, Let's go check you. out the theater. Come Thanks on, guys. Let's right. do it. taking you on a backstage tour of DPAC and I'm here with two of my very special friends, Cade and Langston. Do you guys want to say hi? Hi. hi. How old are you guys? I'm 10. And how are I'm you? seven. And have you been to DPAC before? Yeah. What's your favorite show you've seen at DPAC? Uh, yeah, the Deadpool Pets. And what about you? <laughs> uh, I like the Wildcats. Wildcats. And how many times have you guys been to DPAC? Uh, yeah. I don't a lot. Know. Probably, yeah, a lot. <laughs> More than five, probably. Do you know how many seats are in the theater? 2,000. How many do you uh, think? 2,001. Yeah. Good guess, there's 2,712 seats. Whoa. Wow. Can you guess how many shows we host a year? A year? Yeah, how many do you think come? If there's 365 days in a year, 190. What do you think? Um, 10,000. <laughs> you were close. You were close. We, we host usually over 200 events a year. Wow. Yeah. That that's, was really good. That's cool. That's a lot. And on, on average, like how long does like a show stay here? So it depends. For Broadway shows, we usually do eight performances. Mm -hmm. So that's, they're here for like five days and two of those days they have two performances. Okay. And then for a concert or comedy show, it's usually one night, but occasionally like we had a show called Widespread Panic and they were here for three consecutive nights. Wow. They always do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen them yeah. several times yeah. but it's always like a multi-day yeah. affair. We were really excited. That was our first three night concert that sold out every night. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. When did DPAC open? In 2008. Do you have any other questions? Um, I thought it was like 2011 Why is there a TV in there? Why is there a TV in there? The TV backstage, and it's it helps the person that is making sure everything on the stage goes right be able to see what's happening on the stage. And sometimes they wear a headset so they can tell people like move over to the left or move over to the right or we can't see you or they can communicate with them and actually see what's going on on stage when they're behind and can't see it from. Like, because they're not sitting here, they're backstage. Yeah, as opposed to like sitting here and just yelling, oh no, don't stand there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a <laughs> so we noticed this black, like, little rectangle back here. What goes on back there? So that's really cool. Someone sits back there and makes sure that everyone can hear what's going on and that it's balanced so that if you're sitting in the front row, if you're sitting in the back row, you can still hear at the same volume. And they also help adjust the lights. So when we're on stage, I think they took some shots of like the lights up there. Mm -hmm. um, they move them and they also have different color lights. And so they are controlling all of that. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, Josh. Hello. Thank you so much for having us here. It is so cool to be backstage at the Durham Performing Arts Center. Can you tell us who you are and what you do here? All right, well, my name's Josh. I'm the technical director at DPAC. Um, it's great to have everyone here today. Uh, you guys are getting to see a, a spot that most people don't get a chance to see um, unless you're performing on stage uh, here at DPAC. Um, I am in charge of everything that happens from this rope back. Wow. So if it, it uh, all the shows we put on, whether it's a big Broadway show with lots of singing and sets moving around and big fluffy curtains, 
and the Disney princess is running around, I have to make sure that they're happy. Absolutely. <laughs> and the, that the show happens, which is kind of important. No doubt. Yeah. And so I, I don't feel like I've seen the rope here when I've come to a show. So can you tell us well, a little bit about what's that doing here? So with everything being dark, this rope is a little yellow, kind of think like the, you know, the, the lines on the street so you could see them in the dark. Um, it's to prevent someone from walking off the edge of the stage. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're not going to get very far because you're going to feel the rope. You're going to be like, what's up? Oh, oh, don't go oh, yeah. any further. So that, in conjunction with our fancy, twinkly, little Halloween-y mm -hmm. light here, it's called the ghost light. I was about to say, it seems much more, yes. much more elegant or, or oh, kind of ornate than so, it has to be. Yeah, so the ghost light in conjunction with this rope prevents people from falling off the stage so you can see when the lights are all off. Now the ghost light is elegant. Um, each theater makes their own. So um, the production staff here at DPAC that uh, work for us uh, in putting on all the shows, we were like, we need a ghost light. So it's the first thing we take off the stage when a show comes in and when we're done and we say bye to a show and we're done for the night, it's the last thing that comes back out. So, oh, that's so cool. And then it just is on all the time. Yeah. This thing has been on since pretty much March 13th of last year. Our, uh, uh, our last show was March 12th, March 13th, which was ironically Friday the 13th. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, that was when we, we were going to have a show Friday the 13th. That was the day that uh, everyone was told to stop. What was right. the last show that the you The last show to? was a Broadway show by the name of Les Miserables. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what we see back here? Tell us a little okay. bit about the floor. I think you can see the floor here. It's Ours is actually made by a company in Canada. So this is an import hmm. uh, from Canada. And we put in this new floor this over the summer because we haven't had shows. We've been able to do some maintenance and improvement projects. And one of those was replacing this floor. This is actually a composite plastic. It's basically made up of recycled material. Wow. I don't know what's in it. I just know that it's basically plastic. It's not wood and it's resilient. Nice. Uh, so this floor is the deep pack floor. If you come see a comedian or a, or a rock concert, rock and roll concert or a hip hop show or an R&B show here, you're probably gonna see our floor. The comedian will be walking on it like we are performing to the audience. If you come see a show like uh, the Disney Princesses or a Broadway show, anything from Aladdin or Lion King, um, Wicked, Phantom of the Opera, if you've heard of any of those names, um, yeah. They bring everything in and they will actually put their own floor down on top of our floor because yeah. their floor has what we call um, spike marks on them. So when Position. a set comes and goes or an actor comes and goes, they see where the, the items are supposed to be. And so not to mention their floors might be painted a certain way right. that they need it to, for their look and feel of the show. Um, we can get even fancier with these shows that they will have what we call automated set pieces, which uh, computers basically run. They might be big, heavy set pieces that need to sort of move on stage from time to time and live in front of the audience. In order right. to do that, they're attached to steel cables mm -hmm. and tracks in their floor. And there'll be a crew person who manipulates a computer to make those move. So their floor is vitally important. So it can have everything from spike marks to a look and feel to actual equipment inside of the stage floor that they bring. Welcome. We're now going to talk about the murals that are backstage. So we're standing where Shrek and the Lion King are and you'll notice that Shrek took the artwork from the Lion King, which is a big tradition here at Deepak of shows taking artwork from another show and pretending to be that show. So when you look at it, you're like, wait, is that the Lion King? And then you see it says Shrek the Musical and you're like, oh no, it's Shrek. <laughs> so every show that comes here paints a mural on our wall to kind of like make a memory of it being here. And then the cast all sign it. So what you see all these little 
memes, those are people that were in the cast. And you'll see like the Lion King had a really big cast. There's a lot of signatures there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite things about backstage is just coming back and like reliving all the memories. For the artists, like comedians, they don't usually paint murals. They usually just sign our wall. And how that works is Josh, who spoke earlier, will print out a piece of paper and he'll say like, please sign here and he'll like put it on the wall and then he'll have a Sharpie for them and then they sign the wall. Cool. Yeah. So what happens when you bring a show back? Do they get another mural? So we don't ask them to sign again, but a lot of them like to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so some of them do. And, uh, and what's cool about the Broadway shows is like, Deepak's backstage is kind of so, I don't know if famous is the right word, kind of famous. Like people know that people take artwork from other shows, so they actually think about it ahead of time. Like I know Aladdin <laughs> before they came here, they were saying like we thought about it really hard, and they were very funny. I started to tell that story in the theater. They actually put up like cardboard boxes around the wall so that no one could see what they were painting, and they kept it very secretive. And then at the end, they kind of like did a big reveal. So people got really into it. It's a lot of fun. So I have a question. So yeah, all of these, all of the paintings that are here. Like all of them are like this. Uh, I wonder if there, if you keep on having shows, if it's ever gonna run out of room. People always ask us that, and we always say it's not gonna happen. We're not sure though, obviously, but I think we have a lot of white space, and we also have on some of the, this um, theater there's white tiles on the ceiling, so like we could get creative and have people sign the ceiling. The dressing rooms don't have any signatures, so I think we're gonna figure it out. But that definitely is a question we always get asked. Welcome to the ensemble dressing room. We have six of them on this level. This is where the actors and musicians get ready for a show. So you'll notice that some of the light bulbs are not on. That's because they generate a lot of heat. And so we keep them unscrewed until they need to be used. Um, another thing to note is it's really important that the light bulbs back here match the lights on the stage so when they do their makeup it looks the same here as it does on stage so we make sure that those are all the same. Do you guys have any questions? Do, does someone do their hair and makeup or do they do it? That's a great question and for the Broadway shows usually they do it themselves and they're really good at it. It's very impressive and like I've, I've even learned tricks from what they do. Um, but some of the shows, like actually The Bodyguard, which we showed you, I'm pretty sure the lead in that had someone doing her makeup. So it depends on um, kind of how famous they are and the budget for the show. Yeah, and since this room is so big, do they practice down here? Yeah, when there's a band, they often have, they often like are tuning their instruments or practicing in these rooms. And then another cool use of the rooms is like when we had a show like School of Rock, when there were a lot of kids in it. The, the kids actually do their homework in these rooms. That's so cool. <laughs> Welcome to the catering room. This is where the artists get fed. And behind us, I don't know if you can see, but there's some washer and dryers. So that's where some of the costumes get washed. And we'll have like seamstresses and people that sew fix costumes. So for example, in Newsies, they do a lot of jumping and dancing and they often rip their pants. And so they have to sew them in between the shows. Wow. That's cool. That makes yeah. sense too. I always wonder about yeah. like costume yeah. design. Yeah. Like since, since this is like where they eat, do is it just the artists that eat or is it the workers that eat here too? That's a great question. Usually it's a, it's a mix of both. So like Deepak staff get to come here, but it's, it, there's like schedules. So like the artists come and then oh. Deepak staff, staff may come. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. What? And it's, it's usually really cool how it's set up. Like they have like, they try and make it really homey. So they'll have like vitamins and like a smoothie bar and like oh, things that good. they might not normally be able to get. So it's, yeah, they make it really comfortable and homey. Nice. So one of the fun facts we learned was that when Lion King comes, they actually bring their own washer dryers and they, they make sure they clean their own yeah, materials. So so when, it's, when, you, when you have shows that big come in, is that typical or is that just for Lion King? It's not typical. Mm -hmm. That is definitely, I think, something that's pretty unique to Lion King. Mm -hmm. Lion King has really intricate costumes and they're very expensive and so they're very um, cautious about who handles them and how mm -hmm. they're handled. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though if like 
a lot in, I don't know if they bring their own washer and dryer, but it has special things because they're, they have like Swarovski crystals and it's very intricate what's on their costumes. So I know they're very mindful of how they wash things. Mm -hmm. cool. Why is it called the catering room? Um, that's a good question. Cause it's where, so we have a company that it's called a catering company and they cater, which means they like bring in all the food for them. So that's why it's called the catering room. Thanks for all these wonderful questions, y'all. Yeah, that was great. Questions. High five. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice work, y'all. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you soon.